a very good morning to all the all the participants who have joined us for today's webinar on indexing i would request the participants to please mute themselves so that we can listen to the speaker for today mr pk jayanthan he is a very experienced indexer and he has had a long career with terry press and with Neogi books, and now he has been freelancing for quite some time. So, over to you, Mr. Janthan. Good morning to you all. Thank you, Vivek, and thank you, uh, Mugiraj. Uh, uh, before I uh, start, uh, um, if if you find uh, uh, you know my, uh, my the shape of my face somewhat strange, please don't be alarmed. There is nothing wrong in that. I uh, had uh, a surgery and uh, you know radiation, chemo, etc., etc. In 2018, and uh, now the, the doctor says the this is over, but then the uh, you know the leftovers are still there in the, on the face. So uh, you know I have beard on one side and, and uh, clean shaved on the other side and things like that. It, it's all part of the game, anyhow. So don't be alarmed. That's what I'm telling. And uh, um, I'll, I'll uh, start, I'll take a few minutes to uh, tell you how I entered into uh, book indexing or how I, these people say expert. I'm not an expert as a time. Uh, I'm a student and always we are all always students. Now, I was working in Terry in the uh, DIC. DIC stands for the Documentation and Information Center. And I was a kind of senior secretary there. And it was around 2000, uh, just after 2000, that uh, the DG said that we should now um, index all our books because Teddy used to bring out a lot of publications and we should index. And then, naturally, since we are the uh, information center, the books used to come to us for indexing. And uh, in fact, nobody knew anything about indexing. So the book used to come to us, around 300 pages book. And uh, so what happens uh, if there are 10, 10 professionals uh, in, the, in the section, if it is 300 page book, they used to divide it into 10 separate parts, 30 pages each and give it to each uh, of the professional and uh, you know ask them to mark it. And uh, all the marking, the 10, mark, 10 people marking will be in 10 different ways. And then I was kind of asked to put it in the word and uh, uh, add page numbers, edit the whole thing, split them, split them into, uh, I'm sorry, I have a little problem in uh, speaking sometimes, so uh, I'll take a lot of water in between, please uh, <laughs> excuse me. Okay, okay. So, um, uh, now, I was supposed to coordinate the whole thing. And then I found a lot of difficulty because of the difference in the marking. So I went to uh, our director. You know, we have uh, a DG for the institute and we have directors for separate divisions. And under divisions, we have several areas uh, where we have area conveners. So I went to the director and told him, say, I have got this such and such problems because of the uh, markings. And uh, what do I do? Then he said, all right, you do one thing. You make a presentation on indexing to these people. And that is a shock to me. Because I have never hired, done any presentation anywhere for anything. And so I was uh, kind of uh, panicked. So he said, no, 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 it's OK. And I think, no, no problem, you just uh, have a few, uh, you know, read a few books on indexing, and then you can make the presentation. And I did exactly that. I went through a uh, couple of books on indexing, and there were several books with uh, one chapter on indexing. I went through the whole thing. I made a presentation. And uh, there were two uh, important suggestions which I gave in the presentation. One was that uh, this also I got from one of those books, that the indexer has to read the whole book once before starting the marking. But this was never done. This could never be done because of the uh, lack of time. And the second was that I suggested that there should be one person who 
make the markings because 10 different persons marking will be 10 different ways that will be very difficult and it is completely is not good and he said as it happens in uh, you know all the or most of the time you give a suge good suggestion and they will ask you to do it and this is what happened here also then he said okay from now onwards you do the indexing so the book used to come to me and I used to mark it. I used to enter it in the uh, word because uh, those days it's, it's all hard copy. Uh, and uh, then, you know, do all the things and give it to them. And then when I started actually indexing in the proper way, I found that the indexing which we used to do earlier was all completely useless and meaningless indexes. Uh, it, it could not have been called an index at all, actually. And then uh, this is actually the art of indexing. The, so the, the art of uh, learning also started and then I learned a lot of things while doing indexing. And that is how actually I started indexing and I, I did a lot of books for Terry. And then one day one um, a friend of mine asked me that her sister-in-law had done a book. Uh, it was on a history. It was a history of uh, Puri Jagannath Temple and uh, the temple's uh, influence on the administration, starting from very early days, even before uh, the uh, British British period. And then I said, I have not done any book on uh, book on history. She said, No, you can try out. So I said, I try out. And this book was uh, published by was to be published by Manohar Publications, and they have their panel of indexes, but then. Uh, um, uh, their panel, uh, the members were busy those days and uh, he asked the author to get it done by uh, somebody else. So he came to me. So I did the indexing, I gave it to them and uh, afterwards I got a letter from uh, Mr. B. N. Verma who was then uh, heading uh, Manohar publication and he wrote to me, which I still remember because it was so dear uh, to me those <laughs> words and he said this is the kind of indexes which i have been looking for and i was not getting and this was a kind of uh, uh, nobel prize for me actually though i've done several books i've done several books for terry but then that was part of the duty and so nobody was uh, kind of so much interested in what i was doing and things like that but then this particular uh, word which he said was kind of, uh, you know, very encouragement to me. And then I started, uh, people used to come to me actually for uh, indexing. I, I started doing freelance indexing even while working in Terry. I used to work at home all Saturdays and Sundays and things like that. And then um, that is how I actually came into uh, doing a lot of indexing. And then um, when I started uh, freelancing indexing also, so Sage, for example, Sage, I've done maybe, I don't know, uh, maybe 20, 25, 50 books before I actually started uh, uh, work uh, in, TED, in, in Sage. And this is how I, this is an introduction kind of thing, how I started doing indexing. And then I, I did freelance indexing for several publishers. Sage, OUP, Tata Maglo Hill, uh, Tulika, and uh, there was uh, several of them. And uh, well, it, 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 is a, it is an interesting um, art, though as, not as interesting as editing itself. But anyhow, uh, now we will go about, uh, you know, going into the presentation. Um, before I start with the presentation, let me, tell, tell, let me tell you one thing. You can interrupt me anytime in between. I'm okay with that. Uh, if you have, if I'm going too slow, or if I'm going too fast, too fast, please let me know. And if you have got, got any uh, clarification in the current slide which I am uh, presenting, please ask me. Please interrupt me. You can ask me. And if uh, any, if it is a general question on, on indexing, I would prefer it at the end or in the comments because uh, usually I, I would like to read the comments at the end. Uh, because, you know, so that the, the flow is not uh, interrupted. Now, indexing. 
the two W's and two H's of uh, the indexing. In journalism, we have got five W's and uh, one H. Here I'm talking about two W's and uh, it's actually one H, but I have made it into two H's. What is an index? The whole presentation will contain, will give an answer to this. What is an index? And why do we index a book? What is the need for an index? And then how do we prepare an index? And how do we present an index after preparing? And then how do we present what, what kind of uh, presentation do we do? Uh, the status of an index. Now this comes under what is an index? The status of an index uh, in a book is like this. Suppose you are uh, two people are talking about a book. The moment you talk about the author, you know, you most of you know what, what the book is talking about. For example, in, in colleges, uh, when you're studying, uh, if it is a book on economics or, or, or environment or anything, you know, there are uh, so many copies of uh, the same book in the, uh, in the library and you know which books to read. The, a teacher suggests that, your uh, friend suggests that. So you're asking, uh, which book we have got for economics? And you say Sharma, Mehta, or Misra. The moment you hear the name, you know which author it is, you know the title of the book, you have the whole book in your mind. So, that, the, so the name of the author is the most important when you're selecting a book. And then comes the title. If, if you have got the same author and then two books of similar importance, then the next comes, if this, if this is the author, then which book? There are two books or three books. Then the title is important there. And then the third is a blurb. Uh, you are all editors, so I don't have to tell you what is a blurb. It's a, it's a, it's a very precise uh, content of the book written in about 200, 300, or 500 words, usually given at the back of the page or in flaps in between. Uh, the, the blurb will give you an idea of what you can expect in the, in the book. And then you have got table of contents. Table of contents will give you a little more of the book. Uh, for example, if it is a book on Indian economy during uh, 1947 and 1997, 50 years, and then you will have five year plans. Five year plans may not be mentioned at the blur, but it will be given in the table of contents. It will be given in the table of contents. But within five year plan, which five year plan? First five year plan? Okay. In some cases, even the indexes, uh, even the title may be different. For example, you have got five year plans, and then you have got subtitle within the uh, uh, table table of content. First five year plan, second five year plan, third five year plan, etc., etc., etc. But you are actually looking, looking for uh, a particular item. So, for example, the uh, allocation for a equation for Madhya Pradesh in the first five year plan. You want to get this particular figure, just one figure you want to get, for which you cannot read the whole book, 500 page, 600 page book. You cannot read the 100 page or 70 or 80 page chapter, but you need to go to precisely that particular term, where will you go? It is then the index comes into play. Go, go to the index, and in the index, you can Im immediately see where this education allocation for Madhya Pradesh in the first five-year plan, five plan is mentioned. You can straight away go to that particular page and find out where it is mentioned. What the most you need to do, you to do is to read one page. And probably that is all the time you have got when you are preparing a, a paper or while you are referring something or you know anything like that. So the index will give you almost 50% of the contents in the book. So index is that much importance. And then comes the contents. Of course, contents is of course, it gives you 
everything in the book and then uh, the condensed is you can say it is the king and the index is the uh, prime minister and then table of contents you can say the home minister and the other sub ministers so that is the status of an index in a book now what is an index it is a systematic arrangement of keywords to help the reader locate the information just i have explained now you have a keyword in the, in the index you find the keyword in the text and you get the whole information what you need there sometimes you may have to go to separate pages because uh, you know the information is split into three or four pages so you may you may have to go to all the pages but then it is worth it because out of this 600 page book you are going into you are referring to three or four pages to get a particular information or several um Uh, several topics within that particular keyword a road map to specific information it's the same thing you go to index go to the text now <clears throat> why do you index why do you have an index i'm talking about index i'm not not talking about fiction of, of course actually this is all i'm talking about academic books now why do you need an index index adds value as a reference source for the book uh, an index is very important as far as references comes and then it directs readers to more information within the book and this is also important for uh, you know, marketing purposes because some libraries for example uh, you know, american library they do not purchase a book if the book doesn't have an index so uh, maybe there are other other libraries also i know about american library so i am uh, quoting that there may be other libraries as well so it, it is also important from the marketing point of view but otherwise it's a, a, a important from the reference point of view also now what are the kind of books you index academic publications travel logs atlases anthologies of poems conference proceedings conference proceedings is uh, almost the same as academic publication it is an academic publication only i have put it separately because uh, the first one is authored or edited book and the second is proceedings that is why i have put it separately and then higher education books uh, nc ncert gives uh, index for their 11 standard and 12 standard books for physics chemistry and uh, other things other books so uh, in academic publications you know you you take the particular uh, keyword your particular subject and then make it as a keyword to index it in travel logs you index uh, uh, the names of the people you met or you uh, one second please i'm sorry i had to forgotten to <laughs> switch on the uh, laptop that's it as a current okay the travel logs you uh, index the names of the people you met or the places you travel or the events you witnessed during the travel or all this can be indexed either separately or in one just index atlases naturally names of places anthologies of poems uh title of the poems can be indexed or maybe even the authors in some cases conference proceedings is as i said same as our academic publications so it's the keywords which are indexed and the higher education books is again keywords which are indexed and then books not indexed school textbooks of lower classes are not indexed which is very clear they don't need an index for uh, for the book children books children books are not indexed fiction is not indexed types of key, uh, indexes there are several there are several indexes keyword index which i have already told you you uh, you select a keyword from uh, the book and then index that put it as an as a term for the index subject index in subject you are actually selecting the concept or the idea contained within a certain paragraph or a certain uh, sentence 
uh, it, you may not find the exact keyword in the text if you go from the index, but you will get the idea. I, I will give you an example later on, though you will, you will know what indexing, uh, uh, subject indexing is. And then name. Name uh, is uh, others. For example, if you are uh, um, uh, indexing a book of uh, book by several authors, say for example, uh, poems. If it is a poetry book and you want to index all the others, then you, you know, uh, you take all the names, uh, all the others' names as in, as the index terms. And uh, in some books, for example, autobiography, autobiography or biography. Uh, there may be several names mentioned. So those names can be indexed under name index. Then geographical index is, of course, very clear. In atlases, gazetteers, maps, and travelers, you index the places. Title is, uh, uh, title index is mainly, comes for, uh, one for anthologies, if it is a poetry book. And if it is a literary criticism, criticism, you have got, you may be mentioning several uh, books and several authors. So those can be, those, the title of those books can be indexed. And uh, the title of uh, the authors, which are mentioned within the uh, text, they also can be indexed. That's called uh, title index. And the, the author's name can be put under name index. You can have one index for all these together or separate, separate indexes. And then you have got uh, first line uh, indexes for anthology of poems. The first lines of the poems are indexed. And then books of quotations. In quotation also you index the first line. So these are the types of indexes. But 99% of the books, you can see keyword indexes. And then in some cases you can see name indexes, but I have never ever come across any geographical or title or first line indexes as of now. And uh, subject indexes, yes, they uh, very rarely they they don't because it very, is very difficult to index the idea always. And in some cases, yes, you you cannot use the keyword, and then you kind of uh, index the idea contained within that particular sentence or particular word uh, paragraph. Okay, what do you index within a book? The main text, without any question. The introduction you, uh, usually the introduction is uh, indexed because you get a lot of uh, content, you a lot of uh, topics or matter related to the whole content of the book in the introduction. Introduction is as good as a chapter in itself in the, in the book. Then notes. <clears throat> notes are indexed. Some 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 books you know give notes uh, references as notes. I'm not not talking about those notes. I'm talking about notes which give some extra information of a particular term mentioned within the, within the text. You know you have asterisks there, and within the asterisks you give a whole paragraph explaining that particular term. So that uh, those kind of notes notes are indexed. Then preface you index again only if you have any kind of uh, content in the preface. But usually uh, it is not the case. Preface usually it's a word from the author to the uh, readers. You know, kind of sometimes how he came to you know write about those books and then how other people have him and things like that. It's a kind of first word. So usually preface are not indexed. But in case if there is any any uh, content uh, related matter in the, in the index, in the preface, then you can index that. Appendices you need to index because uh, that is as important as the text itself. What not to index? Dedication is not to be indexed. Acknowledgements, glossary, reference and bibli bibliography. And in some uh, P3 thesis, you can also see um, further reading. They're all reference actually. Those are not to be indexed. Parts of an index. There are two parts for index. One is a keyword and then the locator. Where can you locate this particular keyword? And keyword is divided into two, main entry, sub entry, 
sometimes even subject entry, which is the keyword. Locatory is usually 99% of times it is a page number. Then there can be paragraph number. In some books, for example, in a, in a uh, book on, uh, uh, say, uh, books related to tax or books related to, um, you know, income tax or um, uh, sometimes, uh, uh, you know, those kind of uh, books, they have uh, numbers for paragraphs. They have uh, every, each and every paragraph is numbered. So in those cases, sometimes you give the locator of the paragraph number, locator as the paragraph number. In fact, I have done a, a few books uh, with paragraph as the locator, such tax books or uh, you know, things like that. And uh, article and schedule is for the uh, constitution. Uh, now, I'm not talking about the Indian constitution, which you don't index in. I mean, you are not getting it for indexing, but you, you do, do get constitution for sometimes, uh, you know, for a RWA. There is a bylaws, there is, an, uh, uh, there is a constitution, uh, rules and regulations, which, in which you can mention articles and schedules and things like that. So those can also be indexed, uh, can also be taken as locator. And then uh, how do you select a keyword? Complete reading is essential. You cannot just... Uh, I said, take a I mean, you have got this, 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 this. So, so you take out this uh, particular keyword. No, that is not done. That cannot be done. You have to read each and every sentence. You have to understand what is mentioned in that particular sentence or paragraph, and then mark the keyword. Because you cannot just mark passing references. You cannot just mark anything which is not related to the main content of the book. So every every keyword which you mark has a relation to the content of the book. And in how how do you uh, select a keyword in a hard copy? Uh, if you are getting a hard copy uh, manuscript, you highlight it with a highlighter. And uh, suppose suppose uh, sometimes you get two term two two or three words for the same term at different places of a paragraph. Sometimes the half of the uh, term may be in the first line and the rest two or three words in the last line. So you highlight those and then put a cross mark with a highlighter. So you know these are both to be taken as together as one particular term and not as separate ones. And in soft copy, uh, you know, you usually get PDF files. So you uh, copy it. Uh, copy, select it, copy it, and paste it on a word file. And you add page number immediately. The editing all will come, come later. And uh, yes, as I have said, uh, the different portions in the page. Uh, yeah. Is there a question somewhere? Somebody wants to Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, please. OK. Uh, so different portions in a, in a hard copy you can mark it with a uh, with a line, and in a hard copy and in a soft copy what do you do? You select the whole portion and paste it in Word, and then you delete the uh, middle portion which you don't need actually. I mean, as it is, I don't think yeah, I need to tell you this. You will, you may have done it even for other things also. Now passing references are not to be indexed. There may be important uh, terms, but as far as this particular uh, book or this particular uh, content is concerned, that may be of no value. For example, the first example, Jabwa, I have taken from a social, social forestry book brought out by uh, Terry uh, long back. It talks about Jabwa. Jabwa civil district lies at the southwestern edge of the state of Madhya Pradesh, India, bordering the states of Rajasthan and Gujarat. We have got several uh, names here, Chabua, Madhya Pradesh, India, Rajasthan, Gujarat, or Rajasthan, Gujarat, they are all, they are all um, uh, important terms, especially when, when you're talking about forestry and all, but 
here in this particular case we are talking about jabwa jabwa is the subject and the rest is the predicate so if you are talking about multiple case india rajasthan and gujarat they are important but in the this particular case they are unimportant so you only need to uh, take jabwa as the index step but then how do you index jabwa if you just say jabwa it doesn't mean anything what of jabwa you are talking about population of jabwa or you are talking about uh, the environment the, the uh, rain water uh, rain availability or the what no nobody knows anything if you just say jabwa it doesn't mean anything so you have to say what do you want to mention regarding jabwa here the whole thing talks about the location of jabwa where jabwa is located so the index term will be jabwa location of so location the word you cannot find in the whole sentence you are adding it so this can be conceived as a subject index or a, uh, you are indexing the, uh, the the idea the concept you are indexing so jabwa location of will be the first step and the second uh, <coughs> second example uh, it uh, talks about this was uh, lokanath misra brother of ranganath misra who would later become chief justice of the supreme court and uncle of devak misra also to become chief justice so we are talking about two just chief justices and we are talking about a nobody but this nobody or uh, i won't use the word nobody but uh, you know uh, he is not uh, as important as uh, chief justice in this case in the particular in, the, in this particular sentence but lokanath misra is the one who is important for us as far as this particular sentence or as far as this particular book is concerned so lokanath misra will be the only term which will be indexed from this particular sentence um rangnath misra was the chief justice but he has no value in the index here and the divak misra again has no value so this is uh, what i say by uh, when it say that uh, passing references need to, need not be indexed lokan misra is the subject here that will be the only term here now uh, what are not to be indexed with a book i said that what are not types of books not to be indexed fiction children's books etc but here within a book within a book which you are indexing what are not to be indexed overall subject not to be indexed If it is the book on Indian economy, you don't say economy India off. That is not to be indexed. The title of the book not to be indexed. The name of the author not to be indexed. The chapter title, separate chapter titles not to be indexed because the chapter title and the author's name you get from the table of contents. And nobody will go to if you are looking for any particular author to find out if he has given a chapter uh, on this book he will immediately go to the chapter nobody will go to the index to find out that particular thing he will immediately go to the chap- uh, table type uh, table of contents to find out if his chapter is there so the ta- chapter of the uh, name of the chapter is not indexed and uh, the name of the chap other within the chapter is also not indexed Okay, and keywords always need to be nouns. Always, it cannot be adjectives. It cannot be word verbs. It cannot be adjectives or adverbs. Uh, I'm giving a few examples here: uh, acid, acetic, acid rain, acid sulfuric, and acid solutions. The original uh, terms were acetic acid and acid rain and sulfuric acid and acid solutions. and acid has been taken as a main entry and the rest are the sub entries now the problem here is when you say acid acetic acetic is a noun it is an adjective so you cannot take it as a separate entry or sub entry when you say acid rain acid is an adjective here rain is a noun so there also you cannot take acid as a main entry then sulfuric acid same as acetic acid as a solutions same thing acid is a an adjective and solutions is a noun so here 
you will all give it separately full name acetic acid acid ring sulfuric acid and acid solution you cannot split between these two types in this case so this you, you will get many separate if, if you are do, doing actually an if you are actually doing an indexing you will get a lot of terms like this which are not to be split tables and illustrations you usually give the take table for the title and the caption of the illustration within a table you may have several important terms such as uh, names of states or names of countries or anything they all may be important in their own uh, uh, way but in this index they are not important so you index the title of the table or caption of the illustration and this usually happens sometimes with the uh, uh, with the appendices also you just index the uh, title of the appendix but in many cases you need to go through the appendix very clearly very in detail and then you may find uh, several terms there also how do you mark a table this is a uh, this is an actual title which i took long back from a table book call dispatches of various states million tons said this and this is 2009 now here call dispatches is the only subject that is the subject of this title call dispatches of various states so the index term will be, will be call dispatches of states i'm sorry if if uh, i if, you know my my talk becomes unclear sometimes because it, it happened uh, you know after my uh, surgery couple of years back after talking for some time some uh, letters and some words don't come out very clearly for example when i talk about r uh, it doesn't come out clearly so if if anything is unclear uh, excuse me and you can raise your hand or you can interrupt me please repeat it and things like that. okay okay and the second uh, example import of cocking and non cocking coal million tons and years here we are talking about cocking coal and non cocking coal you have got two separate keywords within this particular title so you need to take both as terms cocking coal import of we are talking about import of both these things so import of will be the predicate so cooking coal will be subject cooking coal import of and non cooking coal import of import itself is not a uh, keyword you don't have to take that and here is uh, another example where you have got uh, three separate keywords raw coal feed and the clean coal production of wash race here you have got raw coal field feed clean coal production and wash race all three are important keywords which you can take in the index so this will be wash race raw coal field of you are also talking about wash race clean coal production of and then clean coal 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 field and clean coal production also need to be indexed separately because if the raw if the reader wants to search wash race he will go to w and he will go he will write wash race so if you are not indexing coal field coal field or clean coal production then he may miss out those two words so you have to give all the three keywords and in the first two both the keywords the first two both the keywords no i'm sorry talk about wash list and this wash list can be made taken as the main entry and this as the sub entry you can split these two things this can be main entry this can be sub entry i put it i put it separately because just to understand uh, make you understand that's all and then indexing style there are two styles for styles styles for indexing intended style which is also called the stacked style and run in style intended you know what is an, what an index is for paragraphs you index and the main entry starts from the uh, margin sub entry is indented 1m 1m space and uh, sub entry sub sub entry is 
indented another sub another m so you have, you have got three levels and that is called indented or stacked style index and in running style you have got the main entry and sub entry in the same page separated by semicolons and then page numbers of course i'm talking about how to mention the page number later on in the in the next slide so you have got indented style and run in style you can see uh, in some cases for example uh, chicago manual they they uh, recommend uh, run in style because it saves a lot of space indented style it takes a uh, extra space so these people uh, cms talks about and they, their indexes are all run in style but as far as the uh, convenience of the reader or the uh, user friendly uh, manner if you, if you if you want to use a user friendly manner is always the indented style and the indented style is what we can see in 99 or maybe even i would say 100 pages in the books 100% of books i have not seen any book in, uh, which is indexed in the run in style so but uh, run in style is there some people use that like uh, chicago manual they use that and there are some people who use some very very rare uh, publishers they use uh, run in style but rare as i said and how do you uh, present the indented style main entry is from the uh, as i said from the margin sub entry is uh, indented to one m and the run over lines for sub entry will be indexed under the same sub entry the, uh, with just one m cms says you have to indent even the run over lines by another m and then sub sub entry another m and if the sub sub entry also is a run over has a run over line another m so you have got six separate levels of index which is which may be very confusing confusing uh, for the reader so i would suggest i have always been doing this whenever there is a run over line i always put it below the the sub entry or sub sub entry i don't indexed it another index just for the convenience of the reader so in theory you have to give one m space for the run over line which i don't do that and many uh, the the uh, indexes which i have been doing they also have not raised any objection the publishers have not raised any objection for that also here is an example for the uh, indented uh, stack style agricultural growth one name indented bihar east india gujarat agriculture same thing and this is the same example i have given in run on uh, run over uh, run in style actually agricultural growth colon because after agricultural growth there is no page number if there is a page number you give agricultural growth comma page number semicolon and then the search bihar is india etc etc they all need to be and in comma page number semicolon etc etc chandan uh, a quick question yeah uh, yes sir uh yeah just a quick question in the previous one the stack slide uh, there is a comma after the indexing term uh, what does uh, like agricultural growth comma agricultural growth comma yeah. so what what purpose does that comma serve the comma actually um, it, it actually means agricultural growth bihar and the agricultural growth is india yeah but that's the, they are starting on the next line Okay, you can do it with the comma, but and, I and also indented. Okay, yeah, and also indented. Okay, the the okay. So you mean the index? Uh, you mean the indentation replaces the comma? Yeah, ind uh, indentation and the new line. Okay. Anyway, continue. I just uh, hmm. pass. Yeah. Okay, uh, that's a good point. I I'll 
take note of that because i have always i have always been doing the, like this actually i give a comma and then uh, give the uh, this thing are the, the sub entries okay okay yeah that's a good idea that's a good suggestion i think uh, i think yes you you have uh, you have a point there sure just okay. say that's a, that's as you were talking about the uh, uh, the table the uh, you know this uh, yes yes bullet bullet uh, points actually yes i think yes <laughs> Okay. Uh, thank you, thank you, Ethan, for pointing oh, out. Not at all. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this I said we uh, the, the, the same thing. And uh, the general principles for indexing is usually you cannot have more than uh, ten locators because no reader is going to uh, you know look into all the pages. If you have got hundred or uh, let us go into that that uh, big let us go into 15 or 20 or 25 now this is going to go into the 25 or uh, you know 20 locations so 10 is the maximum page numbers you can give i mean uh, this is the, this is normal request if there is a normal rule if there is more than that then you split them into entries or sub entries and if needed sub sub entries and the initial letter is always the lower case And, and, and until and unless uh, the, the publisher specifically says that the index is uh, that the initial, initial letter has to be capital, which some people do, some uh, publishers do that, but most of the people they don't do that. Then rag rate, of course, because you only have two or three words in a uh, line, and if you are going to you know full uh, you know justify it. There will lot, lot, there will be a lot of space in between, and uh, it looks so awkward. Botanical names need to be italicized, yes. And this you don't have to space to speak separately because in the text itself that will be uh, italicized. Okay, and this is one thing which I want to emphasize: the style which you follow in the index has to. follow the style of the book itself if the, if the book is in american uh, english style you can have a british english uh, style in the index you have to follow the same style and uh, names of acts bills committees organizations etc everything has to be in full you cannot split um in in, in some cases you you get a lot of names of uh, say for example un organizations UNESCO, UNICEF, UNDP, you know everything. So you cannot split between United Nations and the rest. Even with the uh, chance of uh, repetition, you have to repeat the whole thing. Uh, the same thing with acts. Sometimes, uh, say, All India uh, Muslim League, All India Trade Union Congress, All India, you know something. So you cannot distinguish between All India, uh, split between All India and the rest. it all has to be in full and i have seen an index in fact uh, i have seen an index where the term un u n has been taken as the main entry and the rest uh, for example non non violent and uh, you know non something <laughs> they have split the word and put the half word as the main entry and the rest half word as the sub entry so uh, you you can never do that you should you should never do that and the same word with separate meanings icf um you know could stand for international coach federation or indian cooperatives forum if both the terms come in the book you have to give uh, the the expansion in the brackets so that people don't uh, mistake between the two actually. and here uh, you also have to give sometimes a c ref cross reference cross reference i'm coming to later on actually and the uh, sub head is carried over to next page uh in the in the second page you always have to give the main heading main uh, the the main entry with continued in packets and in italics just to uh, make sure that you know people don't uh, mistake between two separate uh, you know main entries and then uh, locator of formats that's page number i'm talking about page number because that is what we have uh, you know in 99 per 
percent of the books actually term spread over consequent uh, pages if you if you have a term which has four or five words and the first two words come on one page that is last two words of that particular page and the rest in the next page you give the page a number of the first two terms and you don't give an uh, end dash because it is one single term and separate pages you have to separate it with comma and space on 15 123 etc and if it is continuous pages uh, if uh, you know the if a particular term is mentioned in all the pages and all those uh, are important terms which you need to index you give an end dash in between without space without space on both sides uh and uh, you know what n is here n is actually not number 4 on page 355 so in this page we are indexing we are taking a term from the note number 4 so that is why n is given there so whenever you are in taking a term from the uh, note you have to give a note unless unless the same term is uh is indexed uh, is uh, mentioned in the text also because in in that case you may have to uh, give the page number twice which you don't do it so you give only once but if it is only mentioned in the note you have to give n as the number and the number of the note and uh, look at the format uh, all this can be mentioned you know 125 n dash 128 125 n dash 28 125 and that h um all these three are usually used but the middle one 128 dash 125 dash 28 is used mostly but uh, i have seen people i think it is oup i don't remember but i think it's oup they use 125 and dash h they give only one uh digits for the second term And tables and illustrations in C we are used to this. Uh, the locator, the page number you give either in um, italics or in bold to indicate that this is uh, a table or or an or an illustration. But then later on I found that is uh, uh, it's very inconvenient for the reader because it stands out. If you give one page number in bold, it stands out and it disturbs the concentration and then the flow of uh, reading. of the uh, reader that is one thing second thing the title of the table or the illustration will most probably be mentioned in the text in the same page so you don't have to uh, mention it twice so you give uh, the the page number in the normal way and uh, this is an example of paragraph uh, numbers as locator which i have mentioned earlier this is i have taken it from a uh, book which i have indexed earlier tax folded a allowed earlier 2.300 uh, the paragraph number there goes 300 310 320 like that actually and this this two indicates uh, uh, the chapter number and 300 is a paragraph number within the chapter so this is i am just an example of the uh, paragraph locator and alphabetization uh, you actually you have to alphabetize the uh, <coughs> uh, the index Alph- alphabetization can be either uh, letter by letter or word by word usually usually uh, what we do is alphabetize by letter by letter which is the dictionary uh, kind of actually Uh, example here: newborn, newcomer, new deal, and new math. Because uh, after new B, C, D, and M, but in the word by word, it's new deal because new is taken as a word and deal is separate. So new deal, new math. New is taken before newborn, and new is taken before newcomer. But the easiest way for me as i understand is the letter by letter way which is what is usually followed and articles such as the a and i etc is not taken care of while uh, alphabetizing because they go as they uh, alpha they are not indexed uh, they are not alphabetized under 
uh, uh, the, uh, it is not alphabetized under the article, but the main name. The Hague will be alphabetized under H, and uh, a tail of two cities will be alphabetized under T. And anthology is, of course, anyway, under A and uh, A and. Okay. How do you separate between uh, keyword and locator? There are several ways. You can give space. You can give single space. You can give double space. And you can give a comma and a space. It, it depends on the publisher. For example, when I was doing in uh, Terry, Terry used to give double space before the locator. And uh, mm, you know, while I was doing, uh, while I was freelancing while working in Terry, not working in Terry, but uh, <laughs> I was doing the work at home. But then I used to follow the Terry rule. Uh, Terry, uh, I used to give doubt space and uh, send it to Sage. But then when I started actually working in Sage, I found that they are not using that. They are using comma and space. So I was wondering why they didn't uh, tell me earlier. They could have asked me earlier or so I could have changed it. But then they kind of prefer to do it themselves. You know, they used to change it. Probably they, they must have changed it. And then uh, a command uh, space that is the most commonly used style for locator presentation. And uh, proposition, propositions are added to avoid ambiguity. You got books as a common entry or the main entry and then children as a subject. Entry. So you actually don't know what you're talking about. If it is a books on children, or is it books by children, or books for children, you don't know, you have no idea. You have got books and children, so you can take it anyway. That is not right. So you say books by children, so it is very clear, or books for children, books on children. And uh, uh, the second one also, books on, are we talking about books on expenses, or are we talking about expenses on books? We don't know. So uh, unless on is given, you don't know. So if books expenses on, which means you are talking about expenses on books. But if on is given before expenses, it will be books on expenses. So propositions need to be given whenever, wherever there is, uh, wherever there is ambiguity. And cross references. What is cross reference? Cross reference. The free dictionary says that a reference at one place in a work to information at another place in the same work. It establishes a relationship of one term with another term. For example, you have got ICF on one page and the Indian Copedicates Forum in another page after two or three uh, pages. So you have to give, as, as I said earlier, you have to give in brackets. Where, wherever ICF comes, you have to give in brackets. And you also can give cross-reference, ICF, C Indian Copy Editors Forum, and vice versa. And uh, if, if you have a book of uh, Jawaharlal Nehru, say for example, Discovery of India, I'm getting this uh, uh, example later on. You have Disco Discovery of India on one page and you have got Nehru on another page. They are, not two they are two separate entries in the book, but they need to be indexed together because the person, somebody, somebody is going looking for uh, discovery of India. And uh, if discovery of India is indexed under Nehru and not under discovery of India, under D, they will confuse, they will say that discovery of India is not indexed at all. The, the term is not indexed. So suppose you give a cross reference there. You give discovery of India, C, Nehru. Then they will immediately know that, yes, this is given under Nehru, and they will go to uh, go, go to under N and Nehru, and then they will get that. So that is what cross-reference is all for. And uh, this I have explained already to provide additional information, ICF and uh, this thing, to direct relate to related information, you know, like Nehru and his book. And uh, there are three types of uh, Cross references, C, C also, and C under. C 
C is to an equivalent term. As I said earlier, ICF and uh, Indian Cooperative Forum. C also to a related information. I am giving um, some examples later. In the next slide, it comes actually. Related means it is not exactly the same term, not equivalent term, but it, it is a related information. For example, common salt and sodium chloride. There are different terms. But in common salt, you can say C also sodium chloride because they refer to the same item, but they are not same term. They are different words, but refer to the same thing. And C under is actually, it is an indication you are direct pointing something to a sub-entry under a main entry. Discovery of India, C under Nehru. Under Nehru, you have got so many subtitles, and discovery of India is one. So you go directly to the sub-entry, not to the main entry. So that is when you use C under. C under is very uh, rarely used. In fact, I have, I have not used any, actually. I have not seen many also. C also is used, but C is mostly used, you can see. Okay, and these, these are examples. C, American Communist Party, in bracket C. C is always given in italics. C, Communist Party, American. Both are mentioned in the particular book. So you are giving the page numbers only under one term, uh, Communist Party, American. Under American Com Com Communist Party, you only give the reference, cross reference. See, you go, you go, you go to Communist Party of American, American, you will get all the page numbers. And uh, baking soda, see, sodium bicarbonate. <clears throat> this, is, this is sodium chloride, uh, common salt and things. See also, copyright. See also, permission to reprint. They are the same thing. They, uh, they mean the same thing, but they are not the same thing. So you give both. And in copyright, you give page numbers on the copyright also, and you give page number for permission to say reprint also. You give page numbers in both, both places. But in the other case, in the earlier case, you give page numbers only in one case. The other is only given a cross reference. And C under, as I said, discovery of India, C under Nehru Jawaharlal. It's clear. And okay, this is another example uh, for C. Prime Minister's High Level Committee on the Social, Economic, and Education Status of Muslims in India. Nobody will know what this whole committee is unless you say such a committee. Such a, such a committee is well known, and everybody has heard about such a committee. So if you say such a committee, people know. But no, most people will not know what is this whole committee. But you are, when you are giving an index, if the full name is mentioned in the text, you have to give the full name. But give such a committee because that is that will be in the book also, that will be mostly used. And that is better known. So you give such a committee as the main uh, index there, and prime ministers, a high level committee, etc., etc., give in the bracket as the second kind of thing. So such a committee report 153. And length of an index, this is usually uh, two to five percent of the number of number of pages of the book. If it is a 100 page book, the, uh, the index should be between two and five pages. And five pages is, is a low of index. So you don't get, within two and a half to three percent, uh, you get a fairly detailed and uh, uh, precise index. You get. So this is, uh, but this is the kind of role which you got. Uh, can, can, uh, excuse me, I'll, I'll just be back in a, in a minute, please. Huh? So I just wanted to ask whether we have people here who are into indexing other than editing, like do they provide indexing as a second service or an, as an additional service?
This is such a specialized work, I think very beautiful. Okay, is it is it Preeta? So are you providing or you want to provide like? Uh, I'm not, and uh, because okay. nobody else answered, so I, I thought that it okay, was okay. such a specialized work, very few people are doing probably. Okay, okay. even Savita Narayan, she's saying that she would like to, that's why I've come to learn here. And I think Mr. Jayanthan, he has given a very comprehensive presentation. He told us not only about indexing what it is, but also taught us a few things about how actually to create an index. And as, as editors, like we might not be involved in creating an index, but at times we might have to edit the index. But so he's back. Good to understand how it is done. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, you say I am a diabetic and I, I take a lot of water in the morning. So. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. yeah. Okay. Now, uh, okay. This is, we are talking about the length of the index. It will be two to five percent. Five percent is is the maximum. So you usually usually don't have five percent index. It is usually two and a half to three pages. And okay. Now this is. A question which I have been uh, getting from uh, participants wherever I, uh, you know, make the presentations. Do you use software for indexing, or what? What is my opinion regarding indexing using a software? I would straight away say no. I will not use a software for indexing. I, uh, in fact, I, I did uh, try out with a couple of softwares a long time back, and then I found. Uh, the result was uh, disaster. Advantages, uh, the only advantage is that it is a foolproof uh, indexing. If you are naming a particular term <clears throat> and you ask the software to index that, uh, say for example, economy, it will index all economy, economic, economical, economics, everything. And then what happens, you may have to go through each and every entry each and every page, each and, each and every entry keyword to find out if it is needed or if it, if it needs to be uh, edited and uh, things like that. And in, what happens in most of the cases, in, say around 80% of the cases, they are not needed. They are either passing references or they have absolutely no relevance with the particular content and things like that. <clears throat> So that is the only advantage because a software is a slave. It only obeys what you ask it to do. It cannot think of its own actually. So it will, it will, it will give you a lot of key, uh, keywords which you may have to give index. So it, you, which you, may, you may have to give a lot of uh, time to edit. And I find that indexing, uh, I mean, I, I'm sorry. Editing an index generated from a software takes a lot, lot, lot more time than actually indexing it manually. Uh, disadvantages, <clears throat> it lacks uh, uh, human touch. As I said, it's, it's a slave. It only does what you ask it to do. And then a lot of unwanted terms, and then a lot of heavy editing is needed. Lot of time loss. And uh, helping a colleague. Uh, just a minute, uh, Mr. Jainthan. Yeah. I have a question on the previous slide. When you say indexing using software, see, is the entire index generated automatically? Is that what you're saying? Or they use a software and then uh, they, they pick out the index terms? Use of software and then editing the uh, so indexing terms, yes. No, I don't. I, I don't know if if uh, I have not come across any. Uh, there may be. I don't know. I, don't, I have not come across any software which uh, which generates an index as it is. Is there okay, any? So, so the term is picked up by the indexer and then uh, arranging it, rearranging it, and yeah, actually, software. Yes, I I, I did it when uh, PageMaker used to be the uh, you know type setting uh, uh, software used by Terry. <clears throat> There, what I used to do, I used to select a term, 
from the book. Uh, I, I, I was using it uh, for the first time as a, from a PDF file. I used to select the term and say index. So it will automatically, I mean, you, you create the word file initially, and then you create, tell that this is the soft, this is the word file where you need to go and fix it. So as soon as I give the ender, it will automatically go to the other page, other uh, software word file. It will put there, uh, it will paste there, it will give the page number, and it will come back. That is what it used uh -huh. to do. But have you, 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 I found that every time you have to find out, yeah. Have you used C index? Yeah. Is there anything, any question? Nee. Have you used C index, which is commonly used for indexing? C index is a software. I have not used C. Uh, I don't know. I, I have used two, two more uh, software because when I, when I first got this uh, question from the uh, audience, I thought I should, uh, you know, before telling them, I should actually uh, try out. And uh, I don't know which one I used. I, I used two separate, apart from PageMaker, uh, yeah, apart from PageMaker, I used two other uh, in the, uh, software and both were, uh, you know, not very helpful. There are there are they, they software in, that are specialized, quite good, I would say, because there was a time when I was managing an indexing but, team. But uh, I, I will give you a few. Hmm. Yeah, tell me, tell me. No, see, for example, suppose you are talking about uh, word assembly. Okay. How will the index, uh, how will the software distinguish between uh, a car assembly or a people who assemble in a marriage or a legisla legislative assembly? It will not. I am giving some yeah. examples later on. You, you will know that actually. So it cannot distinguish between, uh, between the context. It can only index the term. Uh, which sometimes is completely meaningless. Yeah, I fully understand uh, what you're saying. Uh, I'd uh, like to add one more thing here. Mm, I mean, I, I fully agree with what you're saying. Okay, the, um, it is difficult to you know to segregate the terms um, in terms of uh, human understanding in terms of where we want this to be grouped. Okay, um, but I also yeah. had one indexer uh, with with me some time back. Uh, he, I would say, was single-handedly mm -hmm. developed an indexing tool in Word, Microsoft Word, okay? And uh, he used mm -hmm. to tell us, okay, um, that it is better than uh, C-index. Um, that is something, maybe, let me see if I can put you on to him. Uh, it might help because it is simply uh, Microsoft okay. Word, okay? Okay, let me see. I, I doubt very much though, because uh, because the software, whatever software uh, you know he may have, uh, he may have uh, generated, it cannot distinguish between these three uh, contexts. Okay. I, I, I doubt un unless you specifically say that you say car assembly, then it will only uh, give car assembly, not uh, the other things. But then you have to. Uh, it, it, it will not rearranging the time spent on rearranging will be more, right? That's what you're saying. It, it will be more, it will be more, a lot more, lot more. Okay. 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 Because I have experience in that. That's why I'm, okay. I'm uh, not, uh, yeah. Okay. Now, helping a colleague is when you, uh, either anyway, you have to read the whole thing, sentence by sentence, paragraph by paragraph, and you. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it came because I, I basically I'm uh, from my editing uh, kind of thing. I note down each and error, uh, each and every error or typos, and bring it to the uh, editor's notes. I mean, this I'm not supposed to do it. As an indexer, they don't pay me for that, and I'm not do, uh, doing it for uh, um, any any kind of advantage. It's only helping the editor to, you know, he can go to a particular uh, portion and see what is wrong with that actually. Now it's kind of uh, helping him. And I have a word uh, of request to publishers and uh, editors who, uh, you know, kind of uh, generate the timeline for a publication of a book and things like that. You need to please incorporate time for indexing in, in, in the schedule. Usually what happens, you have 
uh, you know, um, so much dates for uh, indexing, uh, I mean, so much dates for editing, so much for typesetting, so much for proofreading. But you forget forget all about indexing. And whatever time, either is a beta which are index for it. So that is not correct. You need to have uh, the time for indexing built into your schedule because it does need a lot of time. Uh, a 100 page book to be indexed properly will take at least four days. So usually you have a 250 or 300 page book. So that's about uh, 10 days or 15 days. So unless you have that kind of time, it's very difficult to uh, do a good, decent, and uh, detailed indexing. So this is my request to publishers and editors. And my uh, request to uh, fellow indexers is to do mark errors, whatever you find, and inform the auditor. You, you are not asking him to uh, uh, correct it or something. You are just putting it into his notice. Please note this. Please note this. Please note this. That is all. So he goes in. If he wants to correct it, he corrects it. If he doesn't want to correct it, he doesn't correct. Your duty is to put it in front of him. Okay, how do you check as an editor? How do you check an <coughs> index when you get it from an indexer? You have to see the alphabetization. Because what happens sometimes, after split, splitting it into main entry and, uh, you know, so, so main entry and sub entry, you may be making some editing in the sub entry. And uh, some words may be uh, rearranged or you know, initial word deleted or something. And so the alpha alphabetization goes uh, heavier. And unless you do it right, and then you forget all about that. And you leave it and send it to the editor. The editor has, so it is the editor who has to see that all the alphabetization is correct. Sometimes, you know, mistakes may happen with anybody. So you do it. And spelling, you have to see if it is American spelling and British spelling capitalization, any unwanted capitalization or capitalization missing where it is needed and punctuation, for example, if it is colon, uh, uh, have, you know, comma, space, and, you know, whatever is thing. And if there is a, if there is a comma missing from the locator, uh, between the locator and the entry, that also you have to see. Cross references you have to see because suppose you say, suppose you, say you have the ICF, See Indian Copy Editors Forum. And the reader goes to Indian Copy Editors Forum and he doesn't find that because it is not given under I, uh, under I and Indian Copy Editors Forum where, where it should appear. So I see if see Indian Copy Editors Forum doesn't have a meaning because it leads to a blind entry. There is nothing there. So this all cross references the editor needs to check to find to make sure that yes the cross reference is there. And uh, sub entries, sometimes you can split, sometimes you can combine, it's, uh, it's up to you. And uh, locators, you have to do the random check, random check to find out that the index has not made any mistake in the page numbers. Okay. And this is what I said is the result of a <clears throat> an index generated by a software. Now, the, the, the fun is that this is not something which I made of. Made of. This is what I received from Sage Publications when I was indexing for them. And they sent it to all their indexers, telling that this is not what they want. This is what they have received from my indexer. I have taken exactly the same thing. Now, it says America in bracket N. American is wrong because that cannot be a an entry, either main entry or sub entry. And then it says, see also USA. And then you have got uh, hyphen without space, n dash uh, with space, hyphen with space, n dash with space, n dash without space also somewhere actually. And uh, see also USA. And you have got 93 entries, 93 pages have been mentioned here. And then you want to see USA. There is no USA mentioned here. It's only United States of America. 
and there are 34 entries. And uh, altogether, there are 127 entries there. And uh, it's meaningless because there is no USA there. And, uh, and here it says, as a sub-entry of India, it says United States of America, I'm sorry, United States of America and then of India. So it is utterly meaningless. And this, I'm more than 100% sure, has been created by a software. And the indexer sent it to the publisher without even looking at it once. If he had looked at it once, he would not have sent it. Now, there is another one. It says All India Hindu Mahasabha. Now, All India has been taken as a sub and uh, is a main entry in the second one, not in the first one. The second one, Trade Union Congress. So that he means All India Trade Union Congress. Then you have All India Congress Committee. All India has, has been taken as a, a main entry in the first two, but not in the second one because there is a hyphen here. And there is no hyphen here. And now here you have got Muslim League. So All India Muslim League. So all India cannot be, all India Muslim League cannot be split. All India cannot be taken as a uh, main entry and things like that. So these, these are all created by, without anybody can understand that this is created by a software or not. This is what I say when I say that um, a software has no brain. It doesn't think. Only a human brain can think to uh, dif differentiate between uh, a hyphen here and uh, not hyphen here and you know, things like that. And here is uh, yet another one, the, the biggest one. Assembly. So much entries. And in page 196, the entry is people who assembled for a wedding. And second entry, page 156 is Automobile assembly plans and constituent assembly. So all these have been, you know, indexed under the term assembly. Constituent assembly, people who assembled in their marriage, they all have been clubbed together. And look at the, uh, I mean, I, I won't blame the software. The software was asked to, uh, you know, uh, index anything related to assembly, and they did. But the indexer who sent this to the publisher, <laughs> I don't know what you should uh, do to him. Anyhow, and I think that is all. Uh, am I within the time? Yes. So now, anybody has got any questions? Anything, any suggestions? Yeah. I, I take, uh, Yatin, I take your suggestion. I will certainly incorporate that uh, in my future presentations and in my future indexes also. Thanks a lot. Uh, yes, thanks, Mr. Jantan. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Jantan, for a very comprehensive and enriching presentation. And we have a lot of questions, and I will start with a question from Mr. Yatin Joshi. So he's asking, okay. where do you insert numbers in an alphabetical sequence, like when you are alphabetizing, so which now, you have even comes, like comes, comes comes first first before the alphabetization okay. starts. If it, okay, if so it if is uh, have... say, uh, nine, if it is, yeah, yeah, he has given even two examples before the like... alphabetization starts. Yeah, 1947. Uh, say for example, uh, 1947 partition of India. 1947 partition of India comes first before. You start with A. Okay. It comes first. Yeah. I hope Yatin, Yatin that answers your question. Yeah, it answers my question. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, Divya Munjal, she wants to know for a person who wants to have a career in indexing, what skills should he hmm. or she have? And is it necessary to have subject knowledge for indexing a particular book in a particular subject? Uh, um, uh, for the first question, you need to have uh, you need to uh, understand English. That's all. If you are, <laughs> yeah, uh, if, if if you want to index a book in English, you you should 
be able to read and understand what is uh, given there. You have to read, understand, and comprehend. That is all. No, no other qualification. And for the second question, um, yes, you need to have. Uh, not exactly. I, I won't say yes. I won't say no. Because, see, for example, like if you are uh, indexing your book on humanities, uh, you you don't need to have uh, uh, so much of uh, uh, you know subject information. But uh, you only need to read and understand, which you uh, which is very easy for any editor or any anyone who has got uh, good English to read and understand. That is okay. But if you are in the Indexing any scientific books uh, or any with a lot of uh, technical terms, yes, you need to have. Certainly, you need to have such knowledge. I'll tell you uh, one example. Can I can I uh, go out of uh, this uh, stop share? Okay. Yes. Yes. So I, I, I'll tell you uh, what happened. One, one, uh, you know, at the one, one incident which happened with me. Um, I have a colleague, uh, Isha. Petin knows, yeah. and uh, Sajid also probably knows. And he uh, is working from uh, Chennai these days. So he gave my reference for an indexing to one of his, uh, uh, one of his, uh, you know, publishers. One, one publisher he knew. And he sent me a book. The book had only it, it was a complete uh, more than 200 percent medical book, and it had only photographs and uh, captions. So what I was supposed to do is was to caption the uh, was to index the caption. The caption contained the names of the name of the disease, the name of the treatment, and uh, the name of the affected part. These three things. But I just couldn't under make out anything at all, absolutely. And I made an index and sent to them, and they said this is an utterly useless index. So uh, because I just couldn't understand which is a medicine, which is a, a treatment, which is the affected part, and things like that. I sent it to them, and they said this is completely useless. And I offered sorry to them. I said please do not pay anything to me. Because I have not done any service to you, please don't pay. And I sent specifically to the issuer. I said, issuer, please ask them not to pay me. So whatever I have done, it is okay, and uh, they should not feel bad about not paying me because I am not asking for any payment. I feel I will feel bad if they pay me, but then they. Uh, I'm sorry about taking a lot of water in the <laughs> because my. Uh, Mouth get dry uh, too soon. This started after the operation of this surgery, which I had actually. So, Jantri, if I just make uh, one mention, like the, yeah, yeah. The, you you have given the title of your talk as "Indexing the Art of." Yeah. So, in fact, there's an excellent book of the same name, "Indexing the Art of" by G. Norman Knight. It's a beautiful book with a foreword by Harold Macmillan. Okay. And I think every indexer should at least try to read this book. It's a simple, very well written. A can, you, can, just, can, can you uh, send me a reference, uh, please? Yeah, yeah I will. I will. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, please. I will certainly uh, get that. I'll see if it is in the uh, internet. If not, I'll, I'll try to purchase one. Sure. Okay. Th thanks, Ethan. Yeah. Yeah. So, Jayantan, what you mean to say is that if it's humanities, then maybe subject knowledge is not required. But if when we are dealing with a specialized subject such as medicine, I, I think so because a reasonably a person with reasonably good knowledge of English will be able to uh, understand uh, and uh, you know comprehend what is written there. Most probably, unless it is very technical. Unless it is very technical, I uh, repeat that again. Usually, a book on environment or say economy and all. I mean, you don't need much I, because you know I have indexed uh, so many uh, books in humanities, and I, I don't have any subject uh, knowledge of that actually. Uh, it's not very difficult. But uh, scientific books, yes, PCM, uh, and uh, it, it, you you should have uh, subject uh, subject knowledge, some subject knowledge. 
So Divya Munjal, she has a follow-up question like, what's the scope for a person who starts as an indexer? Uh, what is the scope? Um, uh, well, I, um, I have actually not gone out in the market uh, asking for work. In fact, uh, I'll tell you, I, I should uh, thank Ethan because all my work started from Ethan. <laughs> you know, he, after he left uh, Terry, he referred my name for both indexing and editing to his students and his colleagues, and they contacted me, and then they contacted their colleagues and their students. So it is all uh, connected. I have never gone out except in the first, very first case uh, when I was uh, when I wanted to see uh, how if I can get enough work in indexing, I contacted sales. Apart from that, I've never gone out anybody. It's all uh, originated from within. <laughs> no, no, because it is your work. That's by word of mouth you are getting customers. So, uh, no, but I said it all started from uh, you. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So uh, and uh, indexing, yes, indexing is um, has a lot of scope. I think because I don't think there are many indexers in the in the market. Um, so I, I think if, if you uh, have a good indexer, I think you will get work. And I am not getting uh, a lot of work because I am not going out for that. Uh, because uh, as uh, many of you may not uh, agree or they, you may uh, find fault with me, I am not looking for a lot of money. I am doing my uh, editing and indexing only because I am kind of passionate about that. That's all. In fact, when I uh, started uh, my first editing career in sales, I was getting uh, just one third of what I used to get in daily. Uh, but then as, uh, you know, you know, you the passion, the interest it gets, gets uh, uh, you know, it, sometimes it's more important. Then my, my uh, then, you know, I, I think I can afford that because my uh, children are employed. They are well settled, so I don't need a lot of money. So mainly from passion, mainly from interest, I am doing this. But indexing, yes, uh, I, I think it has got a market market uh, for indexing, yes. Because I, I, I have not come, come across many uh, indexes as such. Okay, thanks, Mr. Jensen. And she wanted to ask about the time taken for indexing a book, but you already answered that in your presentation like for a hundred page book you will need at yeah, least four, at least it's four days approximately yeah four days per per yeah four days per hundred uh, pages yeah so the next uh, question uh, is how are in actually, sometime, how are so, pardon? yeah how how are indexers paid on what basis is it per word per page like what well, how do you I, get paid? I don't know I, I have actually not gone into uh, the market asking for uh, uh, payment for indexes, but then when I started the the first book with uh, which I told about, you know, about that which uh, my uh, the the first history book which I did by the system of a colleague for which uh, against which uh, uh, B N Verma wrote. Uh, this is the kind of indexes for that book. I was not paid at all. I uh, they uh, they promised to pay me uh, ten rupees per page, but I didn't get any payment. But I don't regret that because that. Uh, Bian Verma's uh, mail was itself, uh, you know, uh, more than a lot of payments. Um, uh, then um, I started with 10 rupees and then 15 rupees and then uh, 23 rupees and now I am charging 25 rupees per page, for printed page, for the normal book size page. And if it is bigger a magazine size page, then it will certainly be more. more. So 25 rupees is... That is what I do. I don't know what others uh, uh, in charts. So Mohan Kumar, he wanted to ask, keyword selection is part of indexer job or are they provided by the author? Bigger part. Uh, selection of keywords, is it done by the author or is it part of the in indexer's job? 
it is usually not done by the author usually but sometimes yes sometimes some authors give some keywords which they say this has to be in the index but you you don't take it as a as a, um, as a base for keywords you only uh, tell that yes this needs to be there you make the index and uh, then you make sure that this terms are there in the index that is all uh, but uh, i i forgot to uh, mention one thing earlier uh, when i talked about passing references in some cases you need to index passing references um provided if if, if the author or the publisher specifically ask you to do that and what it is it happened with me once once i indexed a book for uh, a book uh, for uh, i don't remember the publisher the book was a uh, history on indian express and uh, you know the the, the family uh, the goenga family and the the book was written by uh, b j vargis and the mr b j vargis wanted that every name mentioned in the book need to be indexed every name and he had indexed just some names that he went out met somebody uh, and had a couple of tea from somebody and that somebody also had to be indexed so this this happens sometimes it, some you know some others or some publishers or many others actually they are particular that this need to be indexed so take okay, some exceptions exceptions may be there but usually you don't index uh, uh, passing references but some cases some cases like this may come around which you may have to deal with no problem after you you are you are only an indexer you you are not the you only obey the orders of the publisher and the other that is all yeah yeah devya had a question on are indexing keywords same as the keywords that people use for online search online searches so divya i think you will have to explain on this like uh, because i think it's not clear yes sir uh, about uh, the the books that are published online so uh, people search for some keywords like uh, mr joshi told that we will search uh, indexing the art of to find out this so these are the keywords that people use for searching online so uh, are the indexing keywords as important as the people use for online searches that was my question um well i think yes because you do uh, get a lot of uh, main very important keywords uh, in the index so i think you can you can certainly use that though i have never used that but i think yes you can you can do that and that can be used as a uh, base for uh, uh, online searches i think yes you can do that okay so uh, but divya um, see when you are looking for an online search you may use 5 10 keywords uh, but you may have 5 6 10 pages of index okay and that may be a single column double column etc okay mm-hmm. so there will be a lot more words in an index than the keywords that we are using for a search right so no, it's okay yeah. it's important to have an idea about the text rather than following the keywords given in index for searching that's so that a- may also be there that may be an overlap i mean good the more most important words but okay. the index itself will have a lot more terms yes that is so yeah 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 thank you and to answer your another question that you asked yeah Uh, i mean i'll tell you a very funny thing that uh, we used to do okay there was a time when we had um, copy editors and indexers okay mm-hmm. and uh, we used to have somebody uh, training people on indexing and i used to do the training on copy editing but i used to interview people and um, see there are people who are interested in academics who have a fairly decent reading habit but some of them may not be good in grammar okay mm-hmm. and uh, these people would want uh they'll actually come for copy editing but then we'll know that they are probably not strong in their grammar of them i used to ask them will you be interested in indexing hmm. and they used to ask me okay what exactly is indexing okay, okay. i used to explain it to them a very simple way uh, in both jobs you'll have to read through the book completely mm-hmm. in copy editing you'll have to edit it line by line and for mm-hmm. that you need to be strong in grammar yeah you'll have to understand the content pick out the important words and then 
group them summarize them categorize them in such a way that somebody else who's looking for information okay they may be able to locate the information okay so this is a simple yeah. way by which i used to explain things to them and i would say that quite a few people have actually joined like that okay as freshers they've taken the training and then slowly they have become decent indexers okay <laughs> Um, Mr. Jayanthan, there is there was there is some confusion regarding the payment when you mentioned like twenty three rupees per page, but hmm. the in index will be only maybe two pages or five pages. No, so no, no, no. I'm I'm talking about twenty five rupees per page of the book, not of the index. If it is a hundred page book, it will be a uh, hundred page multiplied by twenty five. No, not not uh, three multiplied by hundred. No, ah, by by twenty five. No, it's the number of pages of the book. And you have to look at the PDF, the content. Okay, within the PDF. Yeah, within the. It may be a single column book. Hmm. It may be a double column book, and it may be a, a triple column thing. Okay, it can be anything. So depending on how much of content is there in a the book, so there again the rate will change, increase. Yeah, but then. Uh, <clears throat> you know you what you get is a is a is a full uh, uh, is a pdf file which is a final pdf file yeah i so agree agree yeah you, you, can, you can you can you find can find out have... how many uh, how many words is there and things like that so you go by the number of pages and no, i agree the, the page the, is the, the base of, yeah the page is the base but layout can vary some pages will have a lot more content okay i mean the entire book Uh, will have a single design okay some pages may have a lot of text in some of the book the the, num, the amount of text may not be high so the rates will vary depending yeah, on the that, that of course yeah but i think that of course you have to uh, you have to put up with i mean we can't uh, distinguish between for example as, as you are telling uh, you know in one book there are five five pages of uh, uh, tables so so what you need to uh, and this is only five uh, terms from that five pages but then that of course uh, to do while while editing you can uh, specify the number of words but while indexing i, I don't think you can do that you, you cannot uh, but then i what i do i um, read out all the index pages and uh, uh, not index pages, i'm sorry reference pages and bibliography pages and all but if the table is is it coming within the text then i uh, take that into consideration yes that i do actually i agree with what dr venkat said because uh, in single column books there are up to 450 words in a uh, typeset page but in double column Uh, books there are up to 650 to 700 words per page so it matters it takes a lot of time reading those texts so ideally there should be some process in which uh, those words those extra words are compensated or uh, the stipend for those uh, books should be more than uh, single column books well <laughs> it all depends actually you know i i kind of uh, i kind of feel uh, uh, i i feel awkward to ask them if it is double, if it is double column or is it single column and how many pages how many word no i see these kind of things do uh, take place and i said said initially i am looking for a lot of money so uh, <laughs> well well so well mr jain you, you are just humble that's all okay but if you are in a business <laughs> okay if you are in a company all this will matter okay <laughs> Yeah, Jayanthan. I think it's absolutely fair to charge by the word count. We need not go to the extreme that Surit Das mentioned uh, that by character index. count, but word count seems to be entirely reasonable. But how do you count words when you get into the in the uh, PDF? Oh, it's that's very, very simple. There are tools you can even convert to Word and get a word count. There are so many uh, ways to get a word count in PDF. Okay, okay. Word, yeah. not a problem. Uh, In there, maybe they will. They go by the page. Media page. I never thought of that. Maybe. Yeah, you can go at um, Mr. Jantham. Uh, that is what I do because uh, uh, okay, I I will do one thing now that you have suggested this. Uh, <laughs> let me compare. Um, 
<laughs> the way in which I have been taking and which I should actually get if I go by number of words. We have Mr. Madhavan who is a publisher. So can, can, so, can, so, can we have his viewpoint on this? Mr. Madhavan, how do you pay your indexers if your books are indexed? Like... What, what does it look? I didn't get... No, I'm actually Mr. Madhavan is a publisher, so I wanted to ask him like what procedure is followed by him regarding single column okay. books or double column books. So, okay, it will be interesting Madhavan, for you... me also to hear from him. Yeah, Mr. Madhavan, if you can hear. Yeah, but you know, there's going to be a conflict of interest. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> he is you saying really he is saying to uh, disclose. Eh? No, he is saying he pays by word count and also by page count. So I think it depends on what the indexer asks or how aware the indexer is, like uh, about the different options or the differences or the effort level that is involved. Because when Divya gives the gave the statistics, there is a drastic difference in the word count. So. The single column yeah. so books should, for, should for definitely for be charged more. Editing, I, I, but I think what uh, whatever book I have uh, got, most of them have been in single column, uh, not in double column. And okay. I don't know. Uh, yes, big big books, uh, for example, magazine size books, they come sometimes in double columns and sometimes even in uh, triple column. But um, I don't know. I've not come across many books, several books actually. So oh. I don't know. Mr. Maybe uh, as the, the suggestion has been made, let me let me. Yeah, Mr. Let me compare what I've been charging and what I should have charged. Mr. Ma we can see Mr. Madhavan now, ma and if he can speak on this. No, I cannot see uh, Mr. Madhavan. We can see him, but we are not able to hear him. Okay. So maybe his audio is not clear. But in the chat box, he sent a message that it's it's per word and per per page. Both the options is is are used by him. Okay. For for um, for editing, when I when I take editing, uh, I, you know, assignments, I I charge by word, but not by page. Because I think by charging by page is fair for both the editor and the publisher. Because by page, sometimes the whole page may contain one or one, just, you know, the whole page may contain a picture or a, or a photograph or a table or something. And, uh, you know, it, it may be unfair for the editor to charge for the whole page if, if the page contains only a picture. So I go by number of words uh, when I get editing assignments. And I have never thought of going f uh, by word for indexing assignment. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll come back now. <clears throat> I'll see what is this. Oh. Oh. Savita Narayan, she has a question. How does one start a career in indexing as a freelancer? Oh, I um, would... Uh... Jump into this. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, you remember yeah, your please, joke, please, uh, please, yeah. uh, joke um, Vivek, every person at home thinks he can be an editor. Hmm? Yeah, you yeah. can't do that with indexing. <laughs> now you proceed, uh, Mr. Jain. <laughs> <laughs> mm. No, I'll, I, I'll tell you what I did. I think that that is uh, that maybe the correct way. Because many people, many publishers, publishers actually, mainly not, not individual uh, authors, publishers, they look for freelance indexers. So you have to actually uh, go into their sites and uh, find if they have a position for, for freelance indexers. That is, what, that is what I did. I started with Sage Publications, where I later on joined as uh, editor, but that's a, that's a separate uh, case altogether. So this is what I did. I wrote to them. I they, they called me. They gave me an, uh, a test, which I appeared, and then they started giving me work. And uh, then once 
uh, you know, I was comfortable with working with Sage. I, other people also tried, kind of uh, tried contacting me, and then I, I did that, actually. So as I said, everything came through contact. I didn't approach except for the first time when I approached Sage. But I think that is the pro proper way. That is the, uh, in fact, I think that is the only way, unless you know somebody, some public publishers or some people who actually need indexing. So I think this yeah. is the way. Yeah, but I think the question is focused more on how do you learn? Because you will offer indexing as a service only when you know how to do it. So from where are there any institutes or are there individuals or maybe publishers offering the training program for indexing? Oh, in fact, uh, uh, Vivek, the Society of Indexers in Britain, uh, on their website, you can explore that. They do offer training in indexing. And there are uh, quite a few uh, really good books on indexing. I mentioned one, but Chicago University Press also has published another on, it's simply called Book Indexing. So you can really uh, learn your craft through reading and by looking up websites, there are uh, courses available on indexing. I don't know about in India, but there are. Yeah, but in India, in India, I, I'm not really sure if there is uh, uh, any course actually. So in India, even uh, we didn't even have a course on publication uh, till some time back. Now I think as uh, now I think uh, you know, Nathan Nathan should know about that because he was a member of the. A committee who is selected the syllabus and all. So I think, uh, yeah, yes, uh, they, you know, they, has, but otherwise I... They don't yeah. have a separate course, but I'm sure it's a craft that one they can have a, they, they, study. They have a course in publishing, but not... Yeah, they have a course in publishing. They have a course in publishing, but not separately yeah, for indexing. Yeah, not, no, no, I was talking about publishing. I was hmm. telling that for pub, even for... Pub, pub, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Even for publishing, I don't think India has got any. Uh, is there, a, there, there is any course in India? Oh, there are, there are quite a few. In fact, uh, uh, Delhi University used to offer one. Then there is the Siegel Institute of uh, Publishing. Then there's a Serling Book House. Then National oh. Book Trust runs a course on uh, editing and publishing. So there are quite a few. Oh, I don't know because I I search for uh, such a course uh, uh, several years back when I was uh, freelancing. And that is how I, I <clears throat> ran into uh, IBP's, uh, uh, you know, website and, uh, you know, their one, one week course for editing and things like that. So I didn't know, anyhow, this is now I'm probably not going for, <laughs> for a course for publishing, anyhow. Well, well yeah. that is something that we can think of, you know, I do know a few people who can actually train, at least two people I know, but I don't know how good um, all these people are, but I think this is something that we can think of. You know, Madhavan is saying we should go full hog in courses. Uh, we, we, we should do that. Hmm. Sure, yeah. keep that in mind. Well huh? worth uh, doing it, surely. Yeah, even even Prasida, she is saying Mr. Jayanthan can start a training program. He will get a full batch from ICF itself. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let, let me now, uh, you know, what I have been doing is what I learned from my experience. So, uh, uh, if, if for taking a course, of course, I need to learn more. So, let me go through these books, which uh, I think suggests, and uh, let, let me go through. Let me actually learn indexing now before uh, uh, offering a course or something, which, which is a big thing. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I'll be able to do that, but even before doing that, uh, one need to prepare oneself. I would say the possibilities are immense. Like they are endless when it comes to indexing. Because even though there are some courses available for publishing and mm. now for e even for editing, but there is mm. nothing on indexing. And that's yeah. something that that can be learned in a short period of time, provided the person has that inclination and can study different books and learns on the job also and if there is maybe some kind of a support from the publisher or from the trainer so this can be a very good career yeah. option it can it can be yeah. a supplementary yeah. service that, that, that may uh, be good editors can offer on the job only yeah. so this, it is actually this a very been, uh, yeah, this it has been a very interesting art okay 
very interesting art because you summarize the entire book okay in a different way uh, yeah it is something that is absolutely fascinating i would say that i, I mean during the time that i handled it uh, it was perpetually fascinating <laughs> I mean, I think you should start, Mr. Jayantan. You know why? Yeah. Um, in the Mahabharata, at the end of the war, um, they'll say, "Let's go and meet uh, Krishna." Will say, "Let's go and meet uh, Bhishma," and mm-hmm. then all these people will say, "You are there. You are an incarnation. You have all the wisdom." Mm-hmm. He say, "I'll have only the wisdom, but Bhishma has the experience." Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's where that experience comes. You know. Okay. <laughs> then that is where you have the Bhishma. Uh, to sasrama okay so i think we sh- you should start something oh god that that's a this a very very very, very tempting uh, suggestion <laughs> <laughs> okay let, let me uh, let me uh, take it seriously let me think over and i i'll get back to you we will i will get back to you we will i will tell you but uh, not immediately yes. certainly because uh, uh, i have uh, I have an assignment which I uh, a writing assignment actually two of them. Well, I, we talked about in the last time uh, actually. So unless I, I complete that, I don't think I. Anyhow, let let me see. Let me let me try do something. Yeah, yeah. You can take your time. There's no hurry, and I'm happy to see some new faces also today. Mini Pillai and uh, Nina Ganju from Dehradun, who actually attended a webinar that we conducted with Mr. Yatin Joshi in Dehradun. so she is attending the icf webinars for the first time and you can go to the icf youtube channel and look at the previous recordings and uh, subscribe to the channel and today was our 27th session and the 28th session will be by murugaraj shanmugam on advanced find and replace in ms word and next saturday is diwali so our interview session and travel series session will not be there but i will have a facebook live session so whoever is live at that time is welcome to send me a question and i will try to answer it as far as i can and thanks a lot for attending today's session staying till the end and it was a mega session i would say close to 2 hours and madhavan sent a lot of chat messages we wanted to actually hear from him but i don't know there is some problem with the audio madhavan can you try again before we end his audio is off okay no we can't hear anything maybe maybe some problem with his microphone that he needs to fix he, but he, he but he it's good he yeah he it's good he can send me a mail also i uh, you uh, i can give you my email address yes as i will share your email address in the icf webinars group so yeah, that whoever so anybody wants, to, wants to have any uh, kind of discussion or any any uh, kind of questions they can ask me i'm i'm always ready to uh, respond yeah okay thanks all of you for attending and have a nice day see you next saturday thank on you, facebook you, live and on sunday 11 am with miss with murugaraj for the advanced find and replace session that will be our 28th consecutive session that we have been doing on sundays ever since the 10th of may 2020 so thanks all of you vivek i have one question will i be able to see the comments uh, later on will i be yeah i think murugaraj murugaraj will murugaraj will save it and then send it to you and it will yes, have right is na no? yeah i'll say i'll send the entire chat messages to you sir through your email okay 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 the, that that will be very nice so i know uh, what kind of uh, uh, you know questions people have and things like that sure so that will that will be very nice yeah okay, okay thanks so, everyone thank Yeah. Have thank a you, nice day. Thank you, Murugaraj. Thank you, everybody, for attending this uh, kind of boring uh, <laughs> subject. No, here. it 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 was it's a fascinating subject, and I think we can even have a follow up session on indexing later on, where we can maybe take up the software thing because that is something 
a lot of people uh, ask questions on yeah and uh, dr venkat also has some experience in that field like we we can look into how it it, it is done in ms word using the application that someone prepared because although we stick to our traditional things we should, if if there is an advantage of speed that can be utilized i think we should take it because as you mentioned you know you normally don't get as much time as you want so if there is something mm -hmm. available that can give you more time <coughs> see i i i have a, i have a comment here i think uh, indexing uh, to pr preparing an index using a software will be as good as editing an article using a software yeah, yeah i agree yeah, that, but I agree, but uh, I think we should keep on experimenting also and see. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cannot, so thanks. Cannot, you, yeah, you can create a brain, human brain, by uh, from technology. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, okay. everyone. Thank you, Vivek. Thank you, Virgil. Thanks, everybody.